afternoon. Welcome to the Wall Street Pub and Grill for the Gary Goff Show, Episode 1, Season 2018. I'm Russ Steiner, voice of the Tiffany University Dragons, alongside head football coach Gary Goff. Coach, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's a new season, all kinds of new stuff going on this season, Coach. New conference, new opponents, some familiar foes from the past, but all kinds of new things to talk about, some really cool stuff you were doing in the offseason as well. we got some student-athletes to talk about, and we have another special guest coming up here this afternoon as well. So let's just uh, start off with some pleasantries. How was your summer? You know, it went by fast, you know, but um, we've been waiting for this moment for it seems like a long, long yeah, time. Right. So I, I tell the players all the time, you know, this is my favorite time of the year, um, e even over Christmas, you know. So, you tell uh, your players that, you just don't tell your kids that. <laughs> you know, yeah, my kids don't believe that. But, <laughs> no, we're, we, we can't wait for the game Saturday. It seems like it's been forever since we've played the game. And, um, you know, summer went by really fast, but it's okay. I'm glad it's game week. i got to tell you Chris, a quick small story. You know, we're both Atlanta Braves fans. My son and I tried to make our first trip to Atlanta to see the Braves play this year. Had a four game um, mapped out trip, some minor league games, all rain outs. Went down to Atlanta, spent two hours for a rain delay and came home. So I tried to go to a Braves game. I thought you'd be proud of me, but I wasn't able to get to it. But They're doing good right now. Don't mess them up. I know they are. So <laughs> I, we'll, we can talk about that another time. But you know, a lot of new things we talked about here with the Tiffany University football team. And I'm just going to read you part of a news release that will tell you what one of the biggest news things was. Effective Sunday, July 1st, Tiffany University officially became a full member of the Great Midwest Athletic Conference for the 2018-19 academic year. Now, there's 14 schools in the league now with Tiffany University joining. And uh, let's talk a little bit about what it means for your program with this new uh, this new chapter in the Tiffany the book that is Tiffany University. Yeah, no, we're, we're excited about the conference. You know, there's uh, it, it's a great conference. You know, you've got several teams in that conference that actually have won the GLIAC before. Yeah. Um, well, and look and at the preseason rankings. It's ex heavy at the top. Oh, absolutely. You know, so, you know, it, it's going to be a very competitive conference, um, you know, and, and then we're playing three non-conference games, you know, from mm -hmm. two of those teams from the GLIAC. So, you know, our schedule's changed a little bit, but you're going to see a lot of familiar faces on that conference. You're going to see a lot of great football teams on our schedule. So Yeah, the conference has uh, teams located in Ohio, Kentucky, uh, West Virginia, and uh, Tennessee, as well as in Michigan. So it's going to be an interesting year. We've got some new places to go, some new facilities to go check out. That's a fun part for me to go, to go check out the new press boxes in the different places, but uh, Dragons ending a chapter in the GLIAC and entering a new chapter in the GMAC, and it's something I'm really looking forward to. I think it's going to be a good thing for our athletic program across the board, not just for the football program. So, that's what's next for the Tiffin University Dragons, and that's a good, uh, as we said, the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, our new home, and I've got a cute little map there of everything that's going on, and the co uh, coaches poll came out at the start of the, uh, of the season, and the Dragons number four behind Ohio Dominican Finley in Hillsdale. Is that about where you thought they'd put you guys? When you, I mean, you, you don't know, but the, the coaches... You're not getting those answers out of me. I, this early. I got a fish, though, can I? I can fish a little bit. You, you know, that's... Um, you know, let's put it this way. We have no problem being the underdogs. Right. You know, um, you know, we're, we're worried about one game at a time, not to where we're going to end up at the end of the season. Um, and that's the way we prepared our team. And we're more worried about Tiffin University and how we're taking the field and, and, and taking care of what we got to take care of rather than where somebody sees us finishing the mm -hmm. season. So, you know, that, that's all great. Uh, and to be honest, I wouldn't have cared if we were ranked number one preseason or if we were fourth like we are. We're going to approach every day and every practice the same way. Well, media guys like me, these are our talking points, Coach. I got to at least touch on them a little bit. Well, this what your eighth year? Is it really? I know. Well, it means it's mine too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's our first year together. Um, you know, all I can say to that is time flies when you're having fun, right? It yeah. does not seem like eight years. Seems like yesterday was our first game. Well, let's talk a little bit about your coaching staff. Some changes this year. You got yeah. some new guys coming in. Uh, we'll start with uh, the assistant coaches. First year, Mike Yeager. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of us know that uh, our, our defense coordinator was hired away by the Tennessee Titans. Um, you know, we uh, we made a great offer to keep him, but I don't think we're going to compete with Tennessee Titans. That's a tough one. Uh, so we're very happy about uh, Coach moving on. But um, I was able to, to hire um, Jaeger to be our new defense coordinator. I've known him for quite some time. He uh, has been a head coach himself for seven years. He's coached at every level. Um, and, you know, so 
we're kind of from the same family, if that makes sense. You know, he, okay. he helped me find my defense coordinator from six years ago to Matt Edwards and, to, you know, obviously now himself. So very excited about having him on the staff. He brings a lot of, uh, a lot of energy, a lot of experience on board on that side. So, um, you know, I think he's a great addition for us. You have some other new coaching uh, members of the coaching staff as well. I think you have, I think, three more new ones. Uh, Christian Dukes helping out as well. Is he working with the defensive backs? Coach Daugherty. Yeah, oh, okay. uh, yeah. yeah, Brian comes to us. Uh, he was the uh, DB's coach down at Dayton. Okay, that's right. And um, so very excited about him as well. Another uh, a young coach with a lot of energy and uh, a very good work ethic. Um, understands the game. Uh, used to grinding. He's a football junkie, which is what I look for when I go out and hire my assistant coaches. That's probably the first key, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, so um, he, he's been a, a you know, pleasure to have around, too. Um, you know, and, and it was kind of always unique uh, you know, how the staff is going to be pieced together. And, you know, you hadn't worked with these guys before, but but, you know, I can tell you, you know, for the last several months, those two have stepped in, and, and we hadn't missed a beat. And uh, is there any other, is there a couple no more new ones? Or? We, we were able to replace Patrick Galloway. He left as well, okay. and uh, we hired Alex Shepard. Alex yep. Shepard was a uh, receivers coach down at Kentucky Wesleyan. Um, and now he's on staff now as our tight ends coach, and an, another young coach who brings a lot of experience on board. And uh, our tight ends now are, are, are proud owners of their own position coach. There you go. Uh, so he, he's done a great job as well. Well, so um, you know, bringing all three of those on board, I think, is, is gained a lot of experience to our staff, and uh, you know, some guys with some good knowledge. And you bring back a, a very experienced rest of your coaching staff as well. You know, we were talking to Coach Gilbert over there earlier. We won't talk about the class reunion he just went to. It was a bit of a distant class reunion, but we won't bring up the number. But yeah, you, you have a nice uh, collection of guys that you've worked with for quite a while. Some guys they renewed last couple years too, and uh, you know, it's going to be nice to see how all this works out. Right? works together. I'm sure you think it's going to mesh real well or as you wouldn't have brought these guys in. Yeah, absolutely. And continuity is very important with your staff. You know, we, we, um, we spend a lot of time together pretty much seven days a week from here on till uh, after Thanksgiving. So, you know, we, we got to, um, you know, respect each other's opinion and uh, agree to disagree at times, but I'll be on the same page and, uh, you know, going out and attacking our, our game plans and practice plans the same way. Uh, so it's nice to have a lot of these familiar faces back. And, um, you know, like I said, the, adding these three new coaches to staff, I think it's going to bring, you know, a, a, a lot of excitement in the coaching room and some different ideas and different energy at times. Well, before we bring up some of the, the your student athletes, we've got three guests that are going to join us here in the program today. Let's talk about some of the things that you guys did in the off season, some of the, th some of the work you guys put in, and some of the things maybe a little bit expanded out of the football realm. One I can think of um, right off the top of my head is Victory Day, which was just a couple of weeks ago, where you brought in uh, some handicapped kids and gave them just basically a taste of what it was like to be on the football field, even if just for a short time. You let me be a part of that, running the PA for that, but that was just an excellent event. Uh, what an amazing, oh it was my amazing. Gosh. Um, you know, I, I had a, a gentleman reach out to me, you know, probably in March, and was telling me, hey, they, they go around and do this victory day, and it, it's for um, handicapped children who can't play the game, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, they involve the cheerleaders, the band, the football team, runs a little football clinic with them, and puts them in jerseys. They all get to score a touchdown and have the band play for them. And, yep. you know, cheerleaders so cheering for yeah, them. everybody's cheering, so I thought it was a great idea, but uh, Philip Ely, my quarterback's coach actually did this event when he was up as, at Toledo as a player. Okay. So I kind of put him in charge with it. And to be honest, it, it, it blew us all away. I think you, it, as well with you. It and affected me. Play. It affected me. I mean, it was, I, was, I was just going to work when I left the house. But when I left the, the event, it wasn't just going to work. I was touched. I was no, moved we're, it. We're, we're still all having uh, great feelings over it. But, you know, seeing these children score a touchdown and, and have their names called over the PA system and they're excited and jumping around having the band play in, and, and then you look over and see the parents have that one emotional you know, moment right. about watching their child do this. I mean, it, it touched us all. Uh, one thing we've talked about with our team is, hey, we should never – you know, feel like we're having the worst day in the world or a poor me or poor that, you know, because uh, sometimes we get wrapped up in ourselves and forget about we are very, very fortunate um, of what we have. So, you know, it, it was great to do that. Um, we're going to do that from here on out. I think the community, I've gotten so many emails and phone calls from the community awesome. thanking us for doing that. Um, and it, it touched us, you know, in, in so more, so much more powerful than I ever dreamed of. I imagine it was the same way for your student athletes as well down there on the field working with those kids. And they, they acted it out, too. When they were, the kids were running that ball and the defenders were diving past them, the offensive guys were taking advantage and kind of laying down on pushing them down on the ground a little bit. Good actors at time. Good yeah. actors. Yeah. When, when, the, when the reason's right, and that was the reason was right that day. It was a really, really cool event. What's some of the other events you guys have been doing? You mentioned some things here before the program started. Yeah, you know, so um, we, 
we, we got a new locker room this summer. Yes. So our, our team's very excited about their brand new locker room. Uh, a big part of that, uh, you know, we kind of established our gridiron club. Yep. Um, you know, Andy Faber, who will say hello here in a little bit, mm-hmm. is, is our he volunteered to be our president for the first two years. So, you know, what, what myself, Andy, and then uh, Coach Horn have done throughout the summer is we traveled around different areas of the state and had alumni functions. Okay. And really just trying to reconnect with our alumni, let them know we're proud of them and we want them involved in our program to see what's going on. Um, and, and then their support from getting this locker room project going to, uh, you know, now we're going to have Gridiron Club uh, tent at all of our home games. And, oh, excellent. You know, we're, we're really you know, pushing that Gridiron Club to kind of be on their own and, and set up events and, and let our alum know that we want them back and have a great experience when they come back. And, you know, I think Andy and, and that board have done a great job of getting that thing kicked off. And I'm very excited Saturday night to see how many of those uh, alumni and Gridiron Club members come back and, and take part of our atmosphere. Well, we'll talk to Andy about that here in a little bit. I think we'll probably talk to the student athletes first and bring Andy on um, afterwards here. This is the Gary Goff Show. We're live at the Wall Street Pub and Grill. 50 Cent Wing Nights here. If you come down on a Wednesday night and starting at 6 p.m., you get your 50 Cent Wings, and I'll go all the way until our program ends. So if you're running late and uh, you want to keep that wing special going, raise your hand with a lot of questions <laughs> to keep us <laughs> on the microphones here. <laughs> Dragons open up this Saturday night against uh, um, against Northwood, a pretty familiar opponent for your for your guys, a team who's bringing back a pretty decent amount of experience as well. It should be a really nice test for you guys to get the season started. It will be. Northwood is a very good football team. Um, you know, they they won seven games last year. Um, I, I believe we, we tied for fourth in the conference yeah, or something so. with them. You know, but, um, you know, they, they got a lot of upperclassmen coming back. Uh, they went on a roll last year after we played them. I think they won uh, five of their last six games. Yep. Um, you know, Coach up there, Coach Hayes done a great job. And, um, you know, they're going to be a great test for us to see exactly where we are. But, um, you know, again, it's got to be about us. You know, eliminate the mistakes, protect the football, um, take care of Tiffin University. And, you know, I know Northwood's saying the same thing. You know, so it's going to be a good challenge for both of us. But, but um, it, it's it's uh, they're 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 a handful. They're they're a good program. You're all coach speak when I talk to you now, aren't you? That, that's You're all got coach. truth. It's not about what they do. It's about what we do. That's the answer I give every single team. Well, you know, <laughs> there's some truth to that, though. Oh, absolutely, there really is. There's it's just a, it's funny. There's a recipe for winning. I mean, I think the average fan doesn't understand how difficult it is to win a football oh. game. You know, so over the thousands of teams out there that's going to play this weekend. Half of them are going to lose, right. you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, but there's a recipe to winning, and it, it starts with you know, don't shoot yourself in the foot with with uh, penalties, yep. protecting the football, and then your third down conversion. So, you know, that's that's what we've been preaching to our team for quite some time now. And um, you know, I, I, you say it's it's coach talk, and it is. It is. You know, but I, it's 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 a recipe to winning, and um, we don't need to change that. Well, just like how you said you weren't going to answer that question, right? That's a good go. It's, <laughs> it's the same principle. It's the same principle. Which uh, which one of these student athletes you want to bring up first? Yeah. Well, We'll bring up uh, Logan Snyder. He's our uh, offensive captain, and um, you know he's been with me for quite some time now. He's he's in grad school, you know, so he's he's one of our guys playing out his last year of football in, in, in grad school. So excited to have him with us, and uh, he's had a great camp. Welcome in, Logan Snyder, redshirt sophomore for the Dragons, wears number 74 for Tiffany University. Welcome in. Logan, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? I am doing well. Welcome to the Gary Goff Show. Thanks for being on the program and uh, penciled in a starting lineup in the offensive line for this year, right? Were you playing center this year? Yes, sir. So uh, talk a little bit about your core offensive line. Everybody knows football games, one up front, offensive line, defensive line. Talk a little bit about your group of guys. Uh, we got three returners. We got Jeremiah Campbell, a left tackle. He had some experience last year. Ridge played a whole lot last year and past two years, me at center played three and then we got David Heil who played tackle last year moved down the guard and we got Jordan from Toledo a transfer that's playing tackle for us a lot of experience so you're going to keep Ridge in line this year? I'm going to try. <laughs> you get a little feisty out there. <laughs> you know, this is probably uh, 
the first time I've ever been able to say this since I've been here, but we are very deep at the offensive line position. And, um, you know, it, it's a position right now we feel like we've got some guys we can move around and play at different positions throughout the season and, and won't skip a beat. So, you know, we got a, a lot of scholarship money tied up in that O-line, and, um, you know, I, I think it's paid off so far in this camp. We feel very, very comfortable about that, that group of young men. It's going to feel good knowing that he's talking about the depth in that offensive line, knowing that you're penciled in there as a starter. Talk about the work that your offensive line has been putting in in camp. You know, uh, just even after practice, just getting a plus one, watching extra film on Sundays we've been running, getting a stretch in, you know, the whole group's just putting in work, and we know what we got to do to win. Sounds like there's a good camaraderie between you guys. It's kind of a little family type feel. Yes, sir. You live with some of the offensive linemen, too? I live with Dave. Uh, I lived with Ridge for a summer. Wouldn't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask they're, you. They're all good guys. I want to ask you to explain that. Well, well, the joke right now, these guys, two of them, him and David, are in, in grad school. You know, so they, they take their classes kind of whenever they want to. Right. And when the other the roommates come in, they're like, hey, how's school today, boys? We didn't have it, you know. So that, that's kind of the joke going on in his house right now they filled me in today about. So, Well, you go and practice against the uh, defensive line. Talk a little bit about those guys that you see up close and personal every day and talk about what they're going to bring to the table for your Dragon defensive front. Well, we got A.J., um, he played a little bit last year, but he brings a lot to the table this year. He's physical, he's fast, uses hands well. Cam Fox, fast, uses hands well as well. I really don't get much of the ends unless I'm pulling, but I know that they're getting back there, getting after the quarterback. And we got Marvin Radford, who's stepped up a lot, and he's playing real well during camp. Guys in the middle making you work hard to practice. Yes, sir. I think um, Coach Stalker's in here somewhere, but uh, we've also pretty deep at that position. I think we had something like 29 D linemen when we started camp. Wow. So um, both sides at the up front are very, very deep. So we're going to be able to redshirt quite a few guys on both sides this year and, and develop them. But um, O-line and D-line's got their hands full of practice going against each other. Let's go back to the recruiting process. Let's talk about the first time you and Coach Goff uh, met and uh, what was it that brought you to Tiffin University? Remember. Can you remember? <laughs> uh, it was actually two offensive line coaches ago I met at the University of Pitt that brought, that brought me here. Um, and I just like the small class size was what I needed and just family type atmosphere, really. And what are you studying here? Uh, my undergrad's in accounting and then my master's in finance. And what's your plans post uh, Tiffany University when the football stuff ends? Uh, I want to go home, get a job in Cincinnati probably. I haven't been home in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you're probably sick of beating up on the fellow Dragons on the practice field. How, look, how much are you looking forward to Saturday night? A lot. We were actually just talking at practice today. We're like, man, we're tired of hitting these guys. We want to hit somebody else. It's, it's been a long camp for sure. Is it difficult for a player's perspective when it's a night game? Because you probably wake up in the morning chopping at the You probably go to bed the night before chopping at the bit to get at it. How do you prepare yourself to keep yourself kind of level until it's time to ramp up for a night game instead of a, like a noon or a one o'clock start. I just think like staying calm throughout the day, just hanging out, watching football. There'll be games on during the day, watching extra film. Just keep your mind off it for a little bit, and then once it comes time, you can get amped up. Talk a little bit about Logan, what it is that uh, brings him to the forefront being the center of your offensive line. The captain of the offensive line, you got to be a fairly smart player to play at that position. And uh, talk a little bit about Logan, what he's bringing to play. Well, you just heard about his degree and his master's. There's, there's no question about him, you know, having the smarts, you know. But, um, you know, he, he's been a guy since day one, even as a freshman, that has uh, showed up every day with a great attitude, ready to work, um, never complains about anything. Uh, matter of fact, you know, I, I don't think he said too much his first two years at all. You know, but, um, you know, he, he, one of his other close friends who graduated last year uh, was kind of the captain of the offense. And when, when he moved on, you know, this past year, you know, uh, Logan kind of naturally stepped up into that position and hasn't been shy about letting guys know they're doing something wrong or, hey, pick it up, we need to take care of this. So, you know, I, I walked over to him, I think, this spring and said, man, I said, you're actually a great leader. I had no idea. I said, shame on me for this. But, you know, after thinking about it, you know, one of his close friends – they kind of share the same role, and, and you can only kind of have one chief at times, right? But, you know, he, he is uh, definitely a leader for us on the offense. He's somebody we can lean on um, and trust in, in all facets of the game, on and off the field. So, um, you know, he's what you're looking for. And, and when you get a fifth-year senior like this, you know, it, it's – you want those guys back for a reason. Right. Because they're, they're the backbone of your team. You like this leadership role, something you look to embrace this year? 
Yeah, it was different. You know, last year just kind of following behind, and then this year, you know, you got guys looking up to you, and you got to make sure you're doing things right all the time. Right. Well, Logan, thank you so much for joining us, man. Best of luck this season. Uh, continued success. Uh, you part of an offensive line that put together a great running game last year. You got a skilled players all over the place on the offensive side this year. So you do your guys' job up front. There's going to be points on the board this year for the Dragons. So thank you so much for uh, making time for us, and uh, appreciate it. Best of luck to you, man. Thank you. That's Logan Schneider, everybody. Let's uh, go ahead and invite Dejan Isbell up now. As we're live at the Wall Street Pub and Grill for our Tiffany University's Gary Goff Show every Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. You can catch the replay one hour before kickoff here on WTUD. Don't forget you can catch all our games at Coast Country FM 100.9 WMJK as well. All right, Coach, we got another student athlete up here with us, Dejan Isbell. How are you, sir? Doing well. Nice to, uh, for you to be here with us, and uh, thanks for joining us here on the program. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk a little bit about you playing that defense secondary. Talk a little bit about the work you guys have been putting in this year. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a fun camp. It's been long. Um, personally, it's been uh, a grind for all of us, just learning the new system, um, adapting. And, uh, they, I mean, we're, we're pretty young, relatively young, so just trying to learn and, and, and grow together cohesively. It's probably the biggest thing we've been learning to do so far. What well, is that the biggest challenge for you with the uh, with the change? I would, the think so. I would think so. Yeah. Terminology, something to deal with uh, as well, a little bit. Yeah, terminology is uh, a lot different, but um, it's all the same. Like you know, we we relate it back to some of the stuff that our previous defensive coordinator did as well. So it, that's been helpful for me and some of the other guys that you know I'm playing with right now as well. You talked about the youth of your secondary. Now you being a senior, that would mean maybe a little bit of the leadership roles. We talked to Logan about leadership roles with him. Maybe some of that falls on your shoulders now, being an upperclassman. Is that something that you look forward to? Maybe being able to help some of these young guys, some of the things you've seen on the football field. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's a new role for me. Uh, you know, last last couple of years I've kind of been you know the back guy um, just learning and growing from you know a couple of the older guys so now I, I'm uh, I'm excited uh, just to just to be able to have that role and uh, take over and and lead some of the other guys the other guys to where we want to be defense should be pretty good this year I think yeah. I mean, the defense is one place where under coach Goss um, helm from where he started to where we are now, the defense is probably the group that has improved the most. And it's all the hard work guys like you have put into it. And, uh, you know, I think this year the defense should be should be able to handle their own with just about anybody. How you look, how, when you look at your squad, how are you feeling about them right oh, now? Oh, man, I can't wait, honestly. Can't wait to see uh, who's going to make the who's going to make the plays um, and, and how dominant we're going to be. To be honest, uh, I hope that we are on the field most of the time because that means our offense is doing their job. Right. Uh, and uh, I just can't wait to see you know who's going to make the plays out there. Well, you got a talented group of receivers to practice against every day. We talked to Logan about that defensive front for him to practice against, mm -hmm. and I've, there's it's no secret that Tiffany University wide receiving core is a very talented group. How much? Uh, better do they make you guys a practice? Uh, a lot better. Um, there's guys like Victor Talley, um, Gavin Woods, um, I mean, Charles, obviously, uh, Tyler Denton, Davon. I mean, those guys make us better all the time. And just doing one-on-ones with them, just learning how to play against some of those good talent uh, is going to prepare us a lot. And no talking goes on between the two sets when you're uh, playing none? Yeah, right. <laughs> no. Who's bigger talkers, wide receiver core or defensive Wide receivers, off the, easily wide receivers. They're more, oh, they yeah. talk more? Yep. Well, what was that? But you guys talk better? Yes. Okay. There we go. We have to. We have to. <laughs> you know, somebody was just telling me that Tally is the one who does all the talking. I didn't believe him. I said, no, Tally didn't say a word. Tally and Blaine, I would think, talk the most, for sure. That was a quick answer, wasn't it, Coach? Right away, Tally and Blaine. Didn't hesitate. <laughs> yep, Tally and Blaine. <laughs> so you're on that defensive side here uh, with the Dragons. Are uh, you from what, Richland High School? Yeah, Before you Richland, came here to yep. Tiffany University. Yep. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, yeah, it was Texas, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about uh, the path that brought you here to Tiffany University. Um, man, it was an uh, interesting path. After high school, went to UNLV, um, planned to play there. And then uh, things just didn't work out. Went back to Texas. Um, was there for about a year. Took a year off. Just worked. And then um, got the opportunity to go to California and uh, play at a junior college. So went my first year at uh, my junior college, Citrus College, it's in Southern California. Um, I actually ruptured a disc in my lower back. So wasn't able to play that first season. It was kind of like you were probably yeah. question whether football was even going to oh, be yeah. in the future. Oh right? yeah. Um, I mean, it was just a terrible injury. Uh, so I just focused on school, really, uh, that first semester, first year, and then 
miraculously, I, I woke up one day, it was the weirdest thing, and my back was like perfectly healed. It was weird. <laughs> Sleep does uh, the body good. Oh uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. So then um just prepared to have a, a, a good sophomore season um, and ended up playing really well and recruiting opened up and um, Tiffany University popped up um, after, you know, some complications happened uh, at first and then... Um, he, he was on his way to my school, Valdosta yeah. State. Okay. You know, when I, I kind of intercepted, they had a coaching change down there and I kind of intercepted him and uh, Tiffin, where's Tiffin coach? Yep. <laughs> you know, yep, so. yep, yep. I had two, two of my uh, former teammates from Citrus actually was already here, um, Derek Calderon and uh, Stephen Smith, they were here, so I knew them back home, um, talked to them a lot, so they kind of brought me in and, and, and made me feel welcomed here, and then the coaching staff, everything, I mean, everything just felt, felt good, felt, felt like When the right kids thing. ask, where's Tiffin, do you say, that's where football players come to win? Is that how you answer that question? <laughs> you say, where's Tiffin? That's where football players come to win football games, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit about uh, Dejan and some of the work he's been putting in with his crew. You know, I kind of gave him a nickname of, of Mayor. You know, I mean, you, you look up and he's on every one of our covers across campus. Everybody in town knows him. And he, he's just been a great young man. Uh, he, he's just been an ambassador of, of Tiffin you know, football and Tiffin University itself. So, um, you know, when we recruited him, we knew we were getting a big physical athletic guy. Um, you know, we didn't understand what a great person we were getting because we didn't know him as well. But um, I, I couldn't be more pleased with his leadership, uh, you know, his work on and off the field. I mean, he, he's the kind of young man that gets you excited about coaching every day right. and coming to work because you know, you know, dealing with good people like this just uh, you know helps us all make big time changes. Well, you know, you're working with good people who are going to put the work in. That's half the battle right there. Absolutely. Wow. That's probably eighty percent of the battle right there. <laughs> well, Dejan, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank you. I appreciate See, it. You're looking at you, I'm like you don't look like a defensive back to me, man. <laughs> Take care of the Dragons out there this year. Bring us home a victory on Saturday night, and we'll oh, talk yeah. to you again throughout the season. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Dejan Isbell, everybody, senior defensive back for the Tiffany University Dragons. See you, coach, the other kids you bring in, man. Every single one of them I talk to are nothing but pleasant with me. They're just great kids. It's, it's a fun group to work with, I can tell you that. All right. We got one more guest. Mr. Andy Faber. Yeah, we'll bring Andy on up. Where's Andy? He's right over there. He's going to come over to talk about some of the stuff Coach Goff was just uh, chatting about a little bit ago. Our final guest here on the Gary Golf Show. Time just flying by. It is. And Saturday night kickoff, 7 p.m. right here on TUDragonRadio.com, as well as Coast Country FM 100.9 WMJK. All right, there he is. Andy, grab that microphone. How are you? I'm doing all right. How, how, how about yourself? I am doing excellent. Coach Goff wanted to bring you on the program here, so uh, why don't you, uh, Coach Gordon, reiterate uh, the things that Andy's been involved with here, and we'll let you talk a little yeah, bit about Yeah, you know, um, Andy's one of our alum. You know, he, he played football here. Um, then he's uh, been a professor on campus for three or four years? Five years. Five, wow. Start of year uh, five. <laughs> like I said, my eight years flew by, but for five years. Um, and, he's, and he's really been very active with us, uh, you know, all along, every, from the very beginning. And, and, you know, so we decided we kind of wanted to make a change and, and vamp up our, uh, our Gridiron Club and, you know, establish a board with an agenda and, and talk about exactly what their job was, their mission statement, all that. And really it's just about getting our alumni back involved, back on campus because, you know, some of our alum hadn't been on campus five, six, right. seven years and when they step foot on campus they're blown away yep. by a facility like we're in right now at the pub. Right. You know, our mm -hmm. campus has a restaurant this nice on campus. Right. They got the indoor facility. There's so much going on. So, you know, Andy got us back in touch with a lot of his former mate, you know, teammates and then it just kind of snowballed from there so um, I couldn't be more excited you know to have Andy be a big part of this he volunteered to be the president for us for the first two years I don't know if that was smart or not <laughs> <laughs> you know, learning quick Andy Andy's got a young family his kids uh, go to school with mine so I know how hectic it is at times right. um, but you know I, I couldn't be more excited to have him on board with what we're trying to get accomplished with the gridiron club we well, can still be a part of a football program right absolutely you, is early, but you still can be a part of the football program absolutely it is and it's nice we just want to have a spot where no matter what year you played, you can come back, you have a spot where former players are going to be there too, that you know, hey, I can go talk about the old times and the, and the good old days and before the Heminger, before everything else, right. and these locker rooms they have now, we can talk about what we used to have. You can talk about walking over the bridge, 
to oh, practice yeah. and all oh, that yeah. good stuff. So we can talk now, about They've been talking that. about chicken wire. We won't go oh, yeah, other yeah. than that, they were talking about chicken wire. Right, right. <laughs> yes. So how many uh, members are there in the Gridiron Club? Well, we've got eight board members okay. uh, that are all former players, former coaches, other uh, uh, people, uh, other some other friends of the program um, that are kind of the, kind of the faces running the, the uh, day-to-day things. Um, after that, we have, um, I would say, about 20 or 30 family members, alumni. Mm-hmm. So whether it's whether it's whether it's family of current players, former players, and former, you know, and all that that we have as um, members right now. Yeah, I think we've got over 30. So when they become a, a, a part of the Gridiron Club, they get you know privileged parking at the stadium. They get invited to the the alumni tent. Um, you know, they, so there's some perks that come with it. And I think. Coach Horn was telling me we're up to a little over 30 reserved parking inside the stadium. So oh, yeah, it's grown, and, and it's usually been around 15 or so. So it, it's grown. We're doing the right thing. Well, it takes a little bit of work. I mean, things just don't happen, you know, overnight. And uh, is there more information on the Gridiron Club at the football webpage? Yeah, um, if you go to our football um, web page, if you just go to go Tiffin Dragons, you know, dot com and click on football, there's a tab on there that you can click for more. You know, it'll take you right to our Gridiron Club. Um, you can join there, um, and there's, there's going to be on there all the board members listed on there and our mission statement all that stuff. So excited about this. Excited Andy's kind of taking this on for me um, because, as we know, I'm more worried about Saturday night's football game than anything else yeah. right now. So. Right. Will you be there Saturday night? <laughs> oh, absolutely. We'll be there. So that's more information get there. We're going to have our tent down there, and uh, board members like myself will be there. You can come say hey, and we can tell you how to, how to become – Part of the club. So you've probably been out checking out some practices and different things as well. Oh yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about what you've seen out of the, the squad from a non-coach's eye. Well, I see they're working hard because as a former player, I I am not jealous of them going out in this 90 degree yeah. humid heat. Well, it just kind of snuck back up on us, didn't it? I got too many players in here right now for you to say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but no, they're working hard, and I think I, I think they've got that taste that they they know they got something going, which is pretty sweet. Well, would you want to maybe pop in every couple, three weeks or so and just let us know what's going on at the Gridiron Club, give us little updates. You. And if you're here, you can come on every week. Absolutely. But yeah, if you, want to, if you want to just pop in, because it's a really cool thing. It's a great way for, yeah. like you said, not only former players, but former players and you know, their families. Maybe former player met his sweetheart here on campus, and she enjoyed going to watch him play football as much as he watched, you know, enjoys Absolutely. playing football. So it's a great way to get people back together. You know, it's an alumni reach out type th- situation as well, but it's a really cool thing. And that's the whole thing. Just come here. We have a group. Hang out. Be be a part of it. What's the biggest difference between now and when you played? Oh, well, Besides facilities. I was going to say facilities. <laughs> that's too easy. Well, I was a big guy when I played. Now I these guys see. Now I, you're I, I, I teach half these guys in class, and they towel over top of me, and uh, a lot better athletes than when I used to play. Right. Well, Coach Goff's doing a great job of the program, bringing in great quality athletes, putting some wins on the board. So you keep bringing in these student athletes. And like you said, you teach them. You, you see how they are in class. I'm sure most of them, but not all of them, work just as hard in class as they do on the football field. At least they better. They better, especially, especially mine. <laughs> especially in yours. All right. Well, good. One, time, one more time, give out the information where they can get the information online with the, for the Good Iron Club. Yeah, they can just go to our webpage, and that's uh, gotiffindragons.com. Click on the football link, and then there's another link off to the far right that says more. If you click on that, it'll come down to our Good Iron Club, and you, you can uh, join right there. Um, you can become involved and uh, donate any way you want to right there. And like I said, we're going to have our board members on there and our mission state. So, you know, I think it's time to get this thing going in the right direction. And from what we did this summer, traveling around the state, meeting with uh, different alums, everybody's very, very excited to get back involved and get back on campus and, and be a big part of us. So we're just going to talk to Andy on Saturday night as well. Get down to the stadium early for the uh, 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, we, we will replay the Gary Goff Show on WTUD at uh, 6 o'clock and do our live stadium pregame at 6.30 when we can join Coast Country 100.9 on the FM dial WMJK. If you'd like more information, as Coach said, go to the draft. Dragons.com is a place to get it on all of our athletic programs. Tiffin.edu is where you go to get information on our, on our academic programs. The new conference, the Great Midwest. You can go to greatmidwestsports.com to get all that information as well. Keep your eye out for the Great Midwest Digital Network. It's an app where all the schools broadcast are in one spot. You can just open it up, pick the school you want to go to, and boom, right there is your game. All across the board, all athletics. Pretty cool stuff. Well, thank you, uh, Andy, for, very much for being on the program. Thank you. Logan, thank you. Wherever Logan went, thank you, Logan. And thank you, Dejan, for joining us here on the program. Coach, one of the books this Saturday. Go get them. You ready? We're ready.
It's going to be a tough one. Northwood in town, Saturday night under the lights. Let's go get a big win before we start moving east into this new conference. Absolutely. All right, I'm Russ Snyder. He's Coach Gary Goff, and this has been the Gary Goff Show, live at the Wall Street Pub and Grill.